when a number of years ago, Colombia had a problem. And Colombia mm-hmm. is one of the deliverable origins. And so what would happen is when you have a physical shortfall in mm-hmm. the overall market, then the market will invert and become heavily back, uh, go into backwardation. So you have a, a nearby month at an increasing premium to the more distant months. What does that do? One, it slows demand because buyers will say, wait a second, I don't want to pull so much coffee today when it's going to be losing value in the future. So right. they're more inclined to hold off purchases and not hold as many long positions because they're going to be losing money. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward Friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a brand new five-part series with one of my favorite guests to have on this podcast and also happens to be one of your favorite guests to have on this podcast. Welcome back, Judy Gaines from Judy Gaines Consulting. How are you, Judy? Wonderful, because I'm sitting here with you. You're the best. I love our conversations. And folks, in this series, we're going to be talking about the market structure and certified coffee stocks. So guaranteed, this is going to break my brain, just like the series with Carly broke my brain, but for all the right reasons, because we're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff. Judy, when we're talking about market structure and certified stocks, We're going to be talking about all the stuff that's in your wheelhouse that is the reason why everybody loves kind of listening to you and getting advice from you. Um, Very quickly before we do start this, uh, tell us about Jada, Judy Gaines Consulting and why everybody should get on your mailing list. I'm Jay Gaines Consulting. Jay Gaines Consulting. Yeah. (laughs) Why should everyone get on your mailing list? Technicality. Um. So I've been covering the coffee market and other commodities for over four decades now Mm. as a market analyst and strategist. And so I live, breathe everything about the market, which entails understanding what's happening on the producer side, what's happening on the roaster side, the economics and where coffee fits into this complex puzzle. And so that's what I do. And yeah. I'm constantly juggling coffee along with sugar, cocoa, cotton, and orange juice. I have one of the questions I want to ask is, is, is this stuff intentionally complex so that the average person like me struggles to understand it? Why don't people ever talk in just straight terms? Why do they always got to talk about it in really difficult terms? Well, I think that there's just a basic vocabulary. So when, once you understand the vocabulary, then it's a lot easier to understand. So okay. that's what we're going to do here. Right. That, that's the whole goal is right. to find level of the playing field and give people the glossary of terms and have the light bulbs go off. And then the, uh, they say, ah, that's what it is. That's really simple. Nice. So the, the question we're going to answer in this episode is what is the normal market structure and why does it matter? We should start at the history of it, right? Correct. And, and even think about what you just said. You know more than, than you let on because you're saying market structure. Mm. A lot of people don't even understand what market structure is. What is it? So the contract, the futures contract. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll talk about New York Arabica versus London Robusta, but it, it's the okay. same thing. It has different delivery months that go out for 18 months. Mm-hmm. And so right now you would have the September contract and you have the December and you have March and May and July. Mm-hmm. And then you have for the start into 2026 as well. Mm-hmm. So 
each of those contracts is priced differently. So it's not flat across the board. The price you pay today isn't going to be the same price that you pay three months from now or six months from now. And so that difference between the pricing, between the different contract months, is the market structure. And you can have it in the normal market structure is where the cost of carry is reflected going from one month to the next. So in the fiscal market, in the, you know, the, the spot market, mm-hmm. if you had coffee in storage, you have to pay for that storage. Mm-hmm. And that would include warehousing, the insurance, interest rates, the cost of money. And so the market reflects that difference for carrying that coffee from one month to the next contract month. That is the normal market structure. Okay. And I want to encourage anyone who doesn't understand what Judy's talking about, go to, I will include a link in the show notes that will take you to the ICE exchange, what we call the C market, right? I will send, I will put a link in there. I want you to go there and then click on the tab that says data for coffee. And what you'll be able to see there is exactly what Judy's talking about. You will see it says September 2024 and today it's 240. And then you'll see December 2024 and then you will see a slightly lesser number. And then you will see uh, January 2025 and, the, and you will see it keep going. And next to it, you will see that the numbers go down. It is. Ah, a- wait, 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 wait. Tell Pause. Me. Well, yep. let's. So what you're saying is an inverted market structure. That right. is not normal, right? Because if oh, the wow. price goes down into the future, then how is the cost of storage factored into the price? Right. It should be the opposite, that it gets more expensive. So the curve is sloping this way, not this way. Wow, I just answered one of the questions that I had without realizing that I was going to, that that was the answer. But that is what it looks like right now. So do yourself a favor, folks, if you're listening to this and thinking, I can't quite visualize or understand what Judy's saying, go to the ICE exchange and take a look at that so that you can start to grasp some of this language. It will be a wonderful visual aid and it's the data that a lot of people base decisions off. So go ahead, Judy. This is fantastic. So love you. when the market has the cost of carry, it's very easy then for holders of coffee to be able to hedge that and the market kind of pays for that storage from one month to the next to the next. Mm-hmm. When the market is inverted, like you said, Mm -hmm. then that cost of carry has to be borne by the holders of the physical. And so that makes it very difficult for traders because if you own the coffee today and two months from now, you're going to get a lower price. Mm -hmm. That's a problem Mm -hmm. because you're getting the lower price as opposed to your costs of holding that in warehouse being paid for you. Okay. And how is that connected to historic stuff? Like historically, okay. how, how has that evolved? So the market structure, first mm-hmm. off, reflects several things. One, you could have, first off, the, the terminology for when the price starts out lower and then through successive months goes higher and higher than normal carrying charge market. That's called contango. 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 Okay. Okay. C-O-N-T-A-N-G-O. Okay. Contango. And when it's inverted, like the way you were describing, where the nearby price is higher than the more distant months, that's called backwardation. So this is not normal. If I if if what I understand you're saying is that contango is how it should normally be Correct. backwardation is what we're currently seeing and that is is it a problem like well, based makes, on, go ahead it, it makes it difficult for the trade to operate right more difficult and okay. it's unusual if i understand you it doesn't happen that often 
Okay. The thing is that the market has been in this inverted market structure for more than 200 days. And okay. it is the sixth longest time frame in since the 1970s that the market has been inverted for so long. Now, what does that tell us? It's a sign that supplies are tight. Okay. So the so market, market is reflecting what's ha actually happening in the physical. Correct. The futures market is always a mirror image of what's happening in the physical of the physical market. Really? Like even yeah. though that there are so many speculators in the market at the moment? Speculators provide liquidity and it cre creates that balance. Remember, speculators are knowledgeable and they understand not only what's happening directly in, in the coffee market, okay. but also influence outside influences. So okay. understand interest rates and right. currency fluctuations. Mm -hmm. And what is the cost of coffee relative to soybeans? Because there's competition for land. Okay. Okay. And so speculators provide the necessary liquidity for the commercial players to be able to buy and sell coffee easily. So when the C market is giving us a signal that it's giving us right now, we have backwardation and that tells us that we have a coffee shortage in the physical market. Has it right. ever now, happened remember, that, quick question, has it ever happened that those two things have not agreed with each other? Well, you have to understand that there's degrees. And, and okay. this is what we're going to talk about, okay? When, because you can have, the market reflects two things. So let's talk about why the structure would invert in the okay. first place and okay. go from normal carry to one reflecting tighter supplies. Mm -hmm. So the market has deliverable stocks, certified stocks. Mm -hmm. This coffee is graded and, and warehoused in specific exchange warehouses in the US and Antwerp and from Hamburg. And most of it right now is sitting in Europe, in Antwerp. Mm -hmm. And so that coffee passes the grading specifications for the exchange. And that is what is deliverable. So if someone wants to take delivery, physical delivery of coffee in September, they would be getting that stock. Let's now, explain that, if it, that's okay, it, it, just so that we can pin that back. So, folks, okay. when you we were talking with Carly last week about people, most people in the C market – don't actually take receipt of the coffee when they buy a futures contract. So this is the opposite of that. People are buying a futures contract with the anticipation that the physical coffee is going to be delivered. They bought the contract because they want the coffee. And so when we talk about people creating commercial coffee and it's going to be in these warehouses, it's going to get certified to be put in these warehouses so that it can be delivered for these contracts. Correct, Judy. Let, let me correct, but let me tie that back. Yep. Only about 2% of all yep. contracts are actually delivered. Yeah. Okay, so it's very, it's very small. Mm -hmm. And the decision to make or take delivery will be based on the market structure. So people might not know whether they're going to make or take delivery right. when they put their edge on. And that could be a decision that's taken depending on the pricing, as it gets closer to expiration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of that will depend on this market structure. So if the market isn't going to pay for you to hold it, then you might want to just sell out. If you're long, then you might want to close out that position okay. because the market isn't paying you to roll those contracts into the more distant months. But I want to go back to this point about the certified stocks mm -hmm. because you have two different scenarios. You can have a situation where your deliverable stocks are adequate, mm -hmm. but there's a looming tightness. For example, when there's 
a frost in Brazil or a sudden shortfall in supplies, normally because of a weather disruption. Okay. So, um, you know, Which is number happening years right now. Ago, Okay, so when a number of years ago, Colombia had a problem, and Colombia mm -hmm. is one of the deliverable origins. And so what would happen is when you have a physical shortfall in mm -hmm. the overall market, then the market will invert and become heavily back, uh, go into backwardation. So you have a, a nearby month at an increasing premium to the more distant months. What does that do? Mm -hmm. One- it slows demand because buyers will say, wait a second, I don't want to pull so much coffee today when it's going to be losing value in the future. So right. they're more inclined to hold off purchases and not hold as many long positions because they're going to be losing money. Okay. The second point is that as a grower, producer, you're saying, well, wait a second, I'm going to sell all my coffee today because why should I hold it when the price two months from now is less money? So it speeds up delivery of coffee into the marketplace to help smooth any gaps in the supply. It encourages producers to think about we're going to increase our production. It gives them that green light that signal, and it causes buyers to be a little more reluctant and slow down their purchases. Right. So the market structure inverts. And also there's some, well, if we know there's going to be a shortfall, then we better stock up now. And that helps to cause the buying. But more typically what happens also is that those that are short, and the market is running higher, suddenly have margin calls and exit out of those positions, and you get that panic run to the upside. Can we start it, lastly when the market rallied quickly on the fear of a frost, frost in, Brazil. in Brazil? Right. And, and the market and, structure reflects that. <clears throat> and then the frost didn't eventuate into anything serious. But still, the market seems to be holding at between 230 and 240. I can't because believe these words are coming out of my mouth as though I understand <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> also. You know, so, it's the so drought. when we talk about the market fundamentals, well, it's the typical, it's the normal dry season, but the dry mm -hmm. season started early. So that mm -hmm. impacts the soil moisture. And we're coming into the flowering time for the crop in another month. Mm -hmm. So, the worry is always the market sort of climbs this wall of worry that, uh-oh, what happens if it doesn't rain on time? And th there's, you know, some window of play there. But because the rainy season cut out early, the trees are showing that stress already. And so if there's a delay in the onset of the rainy season and the flowering, then is that going to hurt the buds that are starting to um, open, you know, get the, the call it dog the flower. tooth. Yeah. Right. And so that, that's part of it. And if they open prematurely from just stress, stress. then which, which can happen also, and it doesn't rain and the rains are delayed, then will those flowers be lost and cause reduction for what will become the Brazilian 25-26 crop. So the How market serious is will it be? that. How serious will it be if they don't get uh, rains in September? Pretty serious. Okay. Okay. My, my friends so, are telling me that, like, pretty bluntly, that means no coffee in 2025-2026. No. You know, I wouldn't say no coffee. That, that, that's extreme. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, the market's never run out of coffee. So, you know, I'd rather not do that extremist because there's a lot of things that can happen. First off, you can have multiple flowerings. Okay. Secondly, realistically, how much of the crop will be lost? At some point, the rains will kick in mm -hmm. and Vietnam is having great rains right now. So, 
Th- Haven't they had a drought-filled year, though? Haven't they had a really challenging year? They, they had – so I was in Vietnam, like, right before the rainy season started. Right. And you had – six, seven, some places were on their eighth irrigation. So it was really um, dry Mm -hmm. and really, really hot. Very similar conditions to what Brazil faced. Mm. Right. Then, you know, the the, the rainy season now, you have almost record rainfall in Vietnam. Right. So the wells are filled, soil moisture is, you know, back to normal. And now the worry would be if the rain doesn't stop, what's that going to do? to the crop. And that's exactly what they're experiencing in India right now as well. So in India, they had devastating drought most of the year. And then it's been raining so much that everything's over full. The dams are over full. The ground's over. It's super soggy. There's been mudslides. The coffee producers. You know, I just missed that. Because I was in Delhi and I was more, I saw more of the sugarcane areas. Right. And so I was in India um, 12 days and only rained once. Yeah. Well, uh, shout (laughs) out to. Like the clouds opened. (laughs) That was it. Shout out to Komal Sable from South India Coffee Co. Uh, Komal keeps me updated on a lot of the stuff that's going on there. She does a lot of amazing stuff with helping coffee producers understand what's happening. And she, She's been working really, really hard to keep things uh, above board. She'll be coming on the podcast soon, I hope. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go head into the next episode uh, and we'll continue talking about um, the markets and the market structures and why it matters. And we're going to be talking about the, the causes of fluctuations in certified stocks. So join us for that episode, folks. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon. And stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.